immunity means indirect immunity because most others in the society are immune to a particular infectious disease. For example, smallpox. The smallpox vaccine was introduced by Edward Jenner way back in 1796 have now completely eliminated smallpox in our society. The last case of smallpox was in 1975 in Bangladesh. World Health Organization declared smallpox eliminated in 1980. So that means we no longer need to take smallpox vaccines. Does that mean our body has antibodies against smallpox virus? No. If someone gets smallpox tomorrow, that can quickly spread across the community. That is what happened in last year, that is 2019's measles outbreak in US. A tourist infected with measles visited the amusement park, the Disneyland in the United States, and infected others who didn't have vaccines against it. Remember anti-vaxxers who spread disinformation about vaccines. There are a lot of anti-vaxxers in the United States. Most of them are criticizing the vaccines on the basis of the religious grounds. Their unvaccinated kids are still safe because of the so-called herd immunity. Because majority of the kids in the United States are vaccinated against measles, so their kids are safe. Such unvaccinated kids are what social scientists call free riders. Like hitchhikers, these unvaccinated free riders get benefit from vaccinated others through herd immunity. Herd immunity works fine for non-life-threatening diseases like chickenpox. Chickenpox at young age is far more milder than when we get it at the old age. There are people who deliberately expose their children to chickenpox in hopes of getting a lifelong immunity so that they won't get infected when they get older. Again, not a big problem because chickenpox is non-life-threatening disease. Well, how about novel coronavirus? Can herd immunity of some hope? No, impossible because COVID-19 is a life-threatening disease even for the children. Yes, initial reports did suggest that the COVID-19 is less severe in the children than in the adults, but the children are a significant asymptomatic carrier and they can bring the virus to the home and infect adults. A new study published last week in the journal Pediatrics shows that children may play a major role in the spread of COVID-19. The study also reports that children may be vulnerable for the critical illness after all. For herd immunity to work in infectious diseases where no vaccine is available, two things must happen. One, majority of the people in the population should get infected with this virus. And two, patients should recover from it. Yes, COVID-19 is not a mild disease like chickenpox or common cold. Waiting for majority of the population to get infected and more importantly to get recovered from it is not a viable solution. Scandinavian country called Sweden did try with herd immunity by taking a relaxed stance. There were no forced lockdown or curfew, just an advisory for self-quarantine and physical distancing. Schools, gyms and restaurants were all open. Did it work? No. With more than 3,600 deaths in such a less populous country, Sweden's death rates from COVID-19 is one of the highest in the whole world. So in summary, herd immunity is meaningless when it comes to such a serious disease like COVID-19. Mind that many experts have fallen for conspiracy theories about COVID-19 including Elon Musk and Nobel Prize winner Luke Montagnier. Even many so-called experts here in India. For example, see this news in the week that I read yesterday. First thing we can do to fight COVID-19 is to distrust conspiracy theories. Trust only science and scientific consensus. Have you seen my weekly science show called Curiosity yet? Please do watch and subscribe to my channel. See you again and have a nice day.